Howdy, my name is Nonat, and today I'll be telling you all about the basics of creating a level 1 Barbarian in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. People may know Barbarians as perhaps the simplest class to play in other role-playing games. They've been labeled as characters that are only known for hitting things, and that is a horrible misinterpretation. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they've given Barbarians far more options to break that stereotype while still keeping their core identity untouched. Barbarians are incredibly versatile fighters. You'll never know exactly what you're going to get just by looking at one. Some Barbarians may run in wielding massive weapons with inhuman strength. Others may fly by in a blur of attacks with multiple weapons. Still others may hang back and prefer to lob destructive weapons from afar. Let's take a closer look at what the Barbarian class has to offer at first level. When creating a Barbarian, keep the Strength and Constitution stats at the front of your mind. These are your bread and butter. However, other stats like Dexterity and Charisma can still be very useful to a Barbarian. Half-Orcs and Dwarves are very common ancestries when making a Barbarian, but don't be afraid to experiment. Any race could learn to control their baser instincts and release the rage inside of them. Helpful backgrounds for the Barbarian include the Bounty Hunter, Gladiator, Laborer, or Nomad. These all give excellent choices to boost some of your important ability scores and a great selection for skills and feats. Alongside their ability boosts from their ancestry and background, all Barbarians gain an ability boost to their strength, plus four ability boosts of their choice. Listed on page 83 of the Core Rulebook, Barbarians all gain these proficiencies. Feel free to pause the video and jot these down if you're creating your character along with the video. Now, let's dive into what exactly makes this class unique. Barbarians have a much more reckless fighting style than the other classes. Using their Rage action, they become consumed by battle and gain a variety of bonuses and penalties. When a Barbarian enters the Raged state, they gain Temporary Hit Points equal to their level plus their Constitution modifier. Two additional damage with melee weapons and unarmed attacks, a minus one penalty to their armor class, and the inability to use any action with the concentrate trait. The seek action is the only exception to this penalty. A barbarian cannot voluntarily end their rage and can only stop raging when there are no more noticeable enemies, the barbarian falls unconscious or dies, or one minute passes, whichever comes first. There are also certain actions with the Rage trait that can only be performed while raging. Most of these are Barbarian-specific feats, such as Cleave. Now we'll need to discuss how Barbarians differentiate themselves from other Barbarians. Every Barbarian draws their fury and power from an instinct deep within themselves. The type of instinct they have determines the exact type of powers and bonuses they receive when raging. Each instinct also comes with their own anathema. This is a set of rules that the Barbarian cannot break, or they will lose their instinctual powers for one full day. All instincts also gain extra bonuses when their weapon specialization skill increases, but since that only happens at 7th and 15th level, I won't be covering those in this video. I'm going to go over each of the five different instincts in order here, but if you're interested in a specific type, I'll add the timestamps in the description. The animal instinct comes from the animalistic side of the barbarian. They may gain their powers from their worship of certain animals, an uncontrollable animal-like part of themselves, or even a corrupted bloodline such as a werewolf. These animal instincts take over in combat and physically transform the barbarian to give them the fighting style of their selected animal. They also gain resistance to piercing and slashing damage while raging as their skin gains the natural thickness and defense of a wild beast. During character creation, if the barbarian selected this instinct, they must pick the type of animal from which they draw their instinct. Then, while raging in combat, the barbarian gains the unarmed strikes listed next to that animal on this list. You can pick any animal you like, but the core rulebook recommends these nine choices. If you'd like to pick something that isn't listed here, pick an animal from this list that most resembles the one you want to select. If you want to draw your animal instinct from a lion, then use the stats and attacks under Cat. 
The anathema of the animal instinct forbids any kind of disrespect for your chosen animal. This doesn't mean that you cannot kill these animals. If the barbarian chooses bear and is attacked by a wild bear, they are allowed to defend themselves. However, if they go to a local circus and laugh and enjoy the bear balancing things on its nose, they may lose their powers due to enjoying an enslaved, disrespected bear. They are also forbidden from using any kind of physical weapon in combat. Some barbarians draw their power from a draconic instinct from deep within. Whether from worship or revenge, their blood boils like that of a dragon. During character creation, if the barbarian selected this instinct, they must pick a color of dragon that their instinct is derived from. While raging, the draconic barbarian's bonus damage from rage increases from 2 to 4, and all bonus rage damage becomes the same type as their selected dragon's breath weapon. For example, if the barbarian selected the red dragon for their draconic instinct, then they would deal an additional 4 fire damage with every attack while raging. The damage from their weapon stays the same. Only the bonus damage is converted to fire. Draconic barbarians also gain resistance to piercing and the damage type of your dragon while raging. The anathema of the draconic instinct forbids any kind of personal insult. If someone disrespects you, you cannot let it slide. You must either make them take their words back or make sure they know you didn't take it kindly. You must also respect or destroy any dragon you come across, depending on whether your instinct comes from your respect of dragons or your hatred of them. The fury instinct is the most personal form of rage. It comes from deep within and is used whenever and however the barbarian chooses. As such, fury barbarians do not have an anathema or a unique instinct ability. They instead gain a bonus first level barbarian feat. They also resist all physical weapon damage while raging, but only from weapons. Unarmed strikes still deal full damage. The giant instinct imbues the barbarian with the raw power of giants themselves. This could come from their hatred or reverence of giants, or simply their own giant-like ego or presence. These barbarians seem to show completely inhuman strength, even among other barbarians. They can wield weapons made for large creatures, and the bonus damage from raging with these weapons increases from 2 to 6. The Barbarian, however, always has the clumsy 1 condition while using weapons like this. This means they have a permanent minus 1 to anything using dexterity, such as armor class or reflex saves. However, this only applies when the weapon is drawn and held. These Barbarians also gain resistance to bludgeoning damage and their choice of cold, electric, or fire damage while raging. The only anathema of a giant Barbarian is to fail a personal challenge of strength, you must face any challenge given to you, even ones you give yourself, or else you lose your giant powers for one day. Some barbarians gain their powers from their ancestors, or even just the spirits of the world around them. When raging, it is almost as if the barbarian becomes possessed by the very spirits he reveres. While raging, they deal three extra damage instead of two, and all damage they deal, including their weapon's actual damage, can be converted to positive or negative damage. However, the barbarian must state which type of damage they wish to deal when they start raging. They also gain the effects of the Ghost Touch rune, allowing them to harm incorporeal creatures with their physical attacks. Spirit barbarians also gain resistance to negative damage and any damage coming from undead creatures. The anathema of a spiritual barbarian is disrespecting a corpse or spirit in any way. However, they are allowed to defend themselves from aggressive, undead creatures. Finally, let's discuss the feats available to all barbarians at first level. None of these feats have any prerequisites about which instinct you choose. However, many feats at later levels require you to have picked a specific instinct to use that feat. So read up on the feats available at higher levels before choosing your instinct. Starting out, acute vision is simple. While raging, you have dark vision. Useful, effective, and a good feat if your ancestry doesn't already grant you dark vision. Moment of Clarity spends one action during an encounter to allow you to focus for a moment. Until the end of your turn, even while raging, you can use actions with the Concentrate trait, such as Demoralize or Command an Animal. 
Raging Intimidation gives the Demoralize and Scare to Death actions the Rage trait. This means that those two actions can be taken while raging, even though they have the Concentrate trait. Legitimately, just for a second, like, not super structured, I just want to say how much I love the Scare to Death feat. It's only available to high-level barbarians, but you can literally yell at someone so scarily they die. It's great. Anyway, back to the structured content. Raging Thrower allows you to add the bonus damage you gain from raging to thrown weapon attacks. It also applies a few higher level effects as well once you acquire them, but those come at very high levels. Finally, Sudden Charge is perfect if you just want to get into the fray fast. It allows you to stride twice and make a melee strike, all for two actions. Very cost effective. And that's about it. Barbarians have so many choices at level 1 that no two barbarians will begin the game identical, and they'll continue to grow and diversify as they level up. I hope this video was able to clarify the basics of barbarians and help you understand the class a bit better. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing, it really helps out a ton. And if you want to know the second these videos go live, consider ringing that bell. My current plan going forward is still to release two videos a week, uh, class guides on Tuesdays and general guides on Thursdays, but I have a lot going on lately, so that is subject to change. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I also live stream over on caffeine.tv, uh, link in the description. I stream about five days a week around 4 p.m. Eastern time if anybody's interested. Ugh, I can't say interested. I'm leaving that in. If I get a bit overwhelmed, I may have to tone it down to just the general guides for a while, just one video a week. They're a bit easier to make since they're usually a bit shorter. Uh, apologies if I seem to stumble over a couple of my words during this video. I recently chipped a tooth and it's agitated my tongue and it's a whole thing. I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. I hope to keep pumping these guides out, and until next time, no nat ones.